What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to install aftermarket adjustable control arms. So if you guys saw in a previous video, I replaced all the control arms in the back of my car with standard OEM ones that weren't so rusted. So I bought some used ones on eBay, cleaned them up, got rid of all the rust on them, and then basically just covered them up with a nice coat of paint and they look fantastic. I needed those just to get me by because I had a control arm that snapped on me and I didn't have the opportunity to buy all adjustable control arms for the rear. Today, I got my hands on some and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to throw them on your car. Off camera, I jacked the car up in the air, removed the wheel and have everything supported by a jack stand right behind here and I also have the jack still supporting the weight of the vehicle. So that's just there for extra safety. So in, a, in the previous video, I replaced this control arm, this one here, along with this one down here. I took everything in here apart and also replaced every single one of the bolts, nuts and washers with all brand new ones. So everything should actually be very simple with the disassembly and reassembly with the new adjustable control arms. So the used ones I picked up for less than 100 bucks for everything and two sets of them. These new ones, they're a little bit more expensive. So each set of say control arms, say just for this one right here, for the driver side and the passenger side, it cost me about 100 bucks. So it's gonna cost a little bit more than standard arms, but the benefit of it is that you get to fully adjust any kind of measurement in here. So if you wanna make this control arm longer or shorter to change your alignment angles, to change your camber, your caster, your toe, or whatever other angles, you can do that with these arms. So these right here are the control arms that I'm gonna be installing today. These are what are called the traction arms. These are toe arms. There's still a set of camber arms that I need to get, but they were unavailable at the time. However, when they do come in, I will be doing an installation video for that. But in the meantime, the toe on my car is extremely out. So these control arms are gonna correct that along with these. I'll be able to get a proper alignment after I've got all of them in, and the alignment is gonna be on point. The wheels are going to steer straight down the road and not gonna have any wobbles or misaligned steering wheel while I drive. The biggest problem though is going to be right now the toe. Since the stock arms use an eccentric bolt that will allow the, the actual arm itself to move in or out as it pleases, um, I don't have that anymore. The new bolts that I installed on the car, they're just standard bolts and there's no kind of adjustment with them. So it's a little bolt goes through and that's it. With these, since we're using the same bolts, we can adjust everything since we can turn the center part of these control arms. So if I want to make this arm longer, I would spin this up. And since this will be in place, the arm, if I can get this loose, the arm will extend, grow, and we can change our camber, traction, and toe very easily. One thing that I want to address before I go ahead and install these things is that because suspension components, they're on the bottom side of the car, they will get beat on with water, salt, debris, dirt, and everything. So any bare metal or any kind of steel for that matter will corrode if it's exposed. So what I'm going to do to make these camber arms or whatever arms you want to work with, since I want to make these things last a long time and I want to say be able to still adjust them down the road, I'm going to take out each end now unthread them and put some sort of lubricant or any seize on those threads so this does not want to seize down the road. We can do that because we still have these lock nuts and these are what actually secure the arm in. So with this sort of gap, if this is the proper size that we want, uh, to get this so that this doesn't move, we're going to turn this nut up to the inner part of the control arm and it's gonna lock itself in place. The threads for that matter are not going to make a difference if it's lubricated with any sort of anti-seize or not. It's not going to make a difference at all. So it's still safe and I'm gonna be doing that exact procedure for both sides here and here for all of my arms. So with the end of the control arm out and I have this little nut here loosened up, what I'm going to do next is apply a little bit of Permatex anti-seize on the threads so that it's not going to actually seize up down the road. You don't need a lot of this stuff, you just need a little bit, and it'll go a long way. Just apply a little bit on there. Just gotta do it to one side. And when you thread the nut on, what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna push the lubricant and the anti-seize all the way down the threads. It's gonna lubricate the inside part of the nut, and the threads of the actual control arm are going to be lubricated as well. So just slide that down. 
and then we can go ahead and install this, the entire thing, on our controller. So once you have that done to one side, you're gonna repeat the exact same procedure for the other. It's no different, take it out, lube up the threads, reinstall it, and then we can go ahead and install all of these control arms back on our car. With the control arms now ready to go, it's time to remove the stock control arms that we have on the car. So I'm gonna get started with working on this one first. We're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket with an impact gun to remove this bolt and a 19 millimeter um, ratchet to secure this nut from spinning. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a ratcheting wrench, but just any kind of wrench will do the trick. So with that guy out, we're gonna save this, put it aside, because we're gonna to need to reuse this bolt nut and washer for our new one. Next up, we need to do the exact same thing for the nut and bolt that's attached on the other end of the same control arm. Due to the limited space, I'm gonna use a open-ended wrench right here on this side with the nut, and I'm gonna be using a 19 mil with my ratchet to take out the bolt found on that side. So with that now out, we can slide up on the back part and pull this out. So I have all these control arms here. I have the stock one, I have the one that I'm gonna be installing, and I'm gonna show you the difference between these two here. So when I went to go ahead and basically make these two control arms the same length so that I can drive my car down to an alignment shop, what I noticed is that the overall length of this control arm was too long to make it so that both holes on the top end here match the holes on the bottom end here. So what I had to do was actually remove one of the extra bolts that was attached on the bottom end. And that's what you're seeing right here. I don't know why they made it like that, but I removed one of them. And I'm still gonna be able to tighten this up by locking up this nut up to the actual center part of the control arm. Not a big deal, but it's just something that I noticed. And if you don't basically do this exact same kind of test fit now, when you go ahead and install this on the car, you're gonna realize that you can't get the angle that you want. So that's why it's always a great idea to double check everything before you go ahead and install it. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing for this. I'm gonna unthread this bottom end and remove one of these nuts so that I can get the exact same angle for the driver side as I can for the passenger side. So installing our control arm is gonna be pretty self-explanatory. Just slide the front part in, slide the back part here down, and then grab your nut and bolt that we were using before and thread it in both sides. So right now we just want this hand tight and we're gonna secure the other end of the control arm in. Once they're both in hand tight, then we can go ahead and tighten everything up to the proper manufacturer spec. So here we have the bolt, slide it through all the way. Let's try and get it to the other end. I don't know why it's not being nice to me. But once you get it through the other end, you're just gonna attach the nut through here and tighten everything up. We're just about done with the installation for this arm right here. However, this is still not locked in place. So if you can tell, it'll still spin forwards and backwards. So to lock this distance in place, we need to tighten up these two, these jam nuts right here, one there and one there, up to the center part of the control arm. So you just tighten them up so they go in. You're gonna grab a 13 16 and a 15 16 and tighten these up together. Once you do that and you lock them in place, the, uh, the control arm is not going to be moving and it's not going to change out of spec. Now obviously once you do this, you're gonna to wanna to bring your car down to an alignment shop so they can properly get the alignment angles you need and then do this exact same procedure where they're gonna lock up these jam nuts in place. And like that, this is good to go. So we need to continue and re replicate this exact same procedure for the other side. Now on top of this, I'm also gonna be replacing the toe arm and that's found on the back side of the assembly. 
So the tow arm is found back here. We've got a bolt, nut, and washer found on this end, and the same thing found down there on the other end. So of course, we're gonna be using a 19 mil socket to take this out with an impact. And on the other end, I'm gonna be using a 19 mil wrench. So let's get this out. There's our nut, and we can continue to extract this bolt, and the bolt and washer should come out. If we follow the control arm down to the end, we have the same kind of thing. So we have a nut bolt holding the other end of the control arm in, take it out, and we can do the exact same thing to the other control arm to this one here. With the control arm removed and the bolt up front, making it so that both of the control arms are now the same length, I just hand tightened up the center part to the jam nuts and we can go ahead and install our new ISR one on our S14. Now these control arms also work for S13 so if you guys have one and you guys are looking for parts, check the description box because these exact control arms will work for your car as well. So let me show you why this kit is awesome. So right here, I've got the controller, I'm gonna slide it in. Now can you tell that that is not exactly going to fit? See how there's a gap between both ends? Well, what ISR has included, or ISIS, whatever company you wanna call it, they've included new metal bushings. This is the standard one, and this is the larger one. They include four of these things. So you can include and install this larger one on your control arm if it does not fit. Now I have seen videos on the internet or people have been complaining about these kits not working. That's because if you only use the small one, it's not going to fit in the back. But if you swap them out with these larger bushings, they will work. So the large bushing just slides right in there, like that, and then it's good to go. So let me show you the difference between the small one and the big one. You can see that there's definitely a size difference between the two and swapping them over from the small to the big will change that gap. Oh, that's still a small one, but it'll change the gap that we're talking about in there. So with two large ones in, we can go ahead and put that in the car. See how the gap is fixed now? So this thing is going to slide in nicely. You just need to put our bolt, nut and washer in there and it'll hold that part in place. With the far side hand tight, we can grab our control arm, slide it up to this end, put our bolt, nut, and washer in, and then this side here is going to be installed. At this point, the only thing that we need to do next is tighten up the center part of the control arm and tighten it up to the jam nuts so that this is secured in place. Now once we have that done, we need to put the wheel back on the car, put the car down on the ground and then bring it to an alignment shop so they can perfectly dial in the suspension, get rid of any tow, any camber, any caster or whatever that you want to take care of and at that point, your alignment should be set. A standard control arm like this is not going to get you anywhere near the amount of adjustability as you would with an adjustable set of control arms like this. So with this kind of control arm, all that you can do is change any alignment that you have using an eccentric bolt. With this, you can adjust it to basically anything you want. If you want to camera the hell out of your wheels, if you want to make it so that your car has a perfect alignment, if you want to dial it in for the track, you can do all of that using this. And the best part about this though is that it doesn't utilize the standard rubber style bushings that the standard control arm comes with. This has a spherical end to it. So what that means is that this is not going to play, there's not going to be any movement or anything when you put the car under load. Since we have a rubber bushing here for our stock control arm, the harder you push your car, the more this control arm is actually going to want to move in and out because the rubber has some play to it. With the aftermarket one like this, there's not going to be any of that. The only kind of movement that we have is up and down because you literally cannot bend the metal that's inside of there. There's no play in it whatsoever and that is gonna give you a great true ride and your suspension is gonna stay true when you push your car very hard. You're probably thinking to yourself, at this point with these control arms, why didn't I just buy a set of eccentric bolts? That could have definitely been an option if I was just leaving the car at stock ride height and that was it. But because I want to install coilovers on this thing and get rid of the nasty tire gap, I have to install these so that I don't kill my tires in a matter of no time. Bad camber will ruin your car's tires and it will wear it out, but bad tow is even worse. If your tire is basically scrubbing sideways while it's trying to drag the car forward, that's not good and your tire's gonna be gone in a matter of no time. When you set that up, dial it in, you're not gonna have to worry about that at all. If you guys have any questions regarding the video or the products that I use for that matter, check the description box. As always, I'll have links and other information down there for you. If you have any other questions, throw them down in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to help. 
Again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.